What would you think about, depending on moves that might happen, the Pelicans might open the season next year with four guys who are taken in the top four of their respective drafts. Yeah. How about building a team around Zion? Yeah, and you know, with the Anthony Davis trade, if they hadn't gotten the number one pick to draft Zion Williamson, the Pelicans could be headed toward a full rebuild. But the fact that they got Zion number one, it allowed them to continue building around Drew Holiday, and then they do a deal with the Lakers where they get two starting level players, Lonzo Ball and Brandon Ingram. And the fact that at number four, having that fourth pick in this draft, the Pelicans are very much in the marketplace to find a, they'd like to find kind of a young all-star player, somebody that becomes available somewhere else. They could use that number four pick, maybe even another one of the picks that came in the Lakers trade. Um, but short of that, they're in the marketplace right now for, they're kind of taking a, uh, uh, that bids that pick kind of at auction. Teams like Cleveland, Atlanta, uh, Chicago, who have kind of knocked on the door for to see what it would take to move up. But they have a lot of options. And and remember, 20 million in cap space right now. They could take that to 28 million this summer. The Pelicans could be a team right back into the playoffs and set up to be very good very quickly in the post Anthony Davis era. There'll be some transition though for Zion because while they've got a lot of talented players potentially around him. He's going to be the man. That's different, right? Well, it's, it's going to be a huge difference. As a guy who was the third pick in the draft, like you said, 22 years ago, I was coming from a program in Colorado who we did good that season. But you go to Boston, we had a lot of rookies. I mean, we got beat every single night. It was a, it was a big-time adjustment. This kid is 19 years old, right? And he, he'll have the weight of the world on his shoulders. Everybody in New Orleans is waiting on him to come down there. Um, they're losing a franchise guy who will be a Hall of Famer. They're gaining one now. Uh, and we all think that he'll be special, but it's a ton of pressure. There. There'll be a lot of pressure bestowed on that young man. But he's got the goods, right? He's handled the pressure so far. He was really, you could argue, the face of basketball over the last year. But Zion Williamson is the real deal. He has athleticism that is literally off the charts, and I'm using literally correctly because he outjumped the uh, the device that they use to measure vertical leap at Duke, uh, jumping 45 inches and. Watch this range that he's got defensively. On the far side of the court after the skip pass to DeAndre Hunter, an outstanding athlete himself, goes all the way across court and blocks that jump shot out of bounds. You just don't see that very often, almost never. But he's got a really high basketball IQ. He gets it. He understands how to play. He is uh, very instinctive on the defensive end, average over two steals per game, about two blocks. He makes big time plays defensively. And he doesn't really even know how to play just yet defensively, but he's a, uh, an outstanding and a willing passer. And maybe the best part with his athletic profile, his skill level, all the stuff you can say about him, he plays hard all the time. He's got a relentless motor, never takes a playoff, and there are very few players you can say that about that impacts the game on both ends. Can he improve? Yeah, he can be a better shooter. But, man, that, I've never seen a player like him on the basketball floor. There's never been anybody like him in this game. Now, you said that from the opening night that we saw him when he made his regular season debut at Duke, and we've talked a lot about how basketball is becoming a shooter's game. Game. Small ball guy Mike Schmitz is with us now, draft expert, evaluation expert. So if we're going small here, why is it that Zion's perfectly suited for this NBA? Yeah, five, ten years ago, there may have been questions. What position is Zion Williamson? He's coming into the NBA at the ideal time because he is the epitome of a positionless prospect. It starts on the defensive end. He can guard one through five. We saw him regularly stepping out on the perimeter, switching on a point guard, sliding his feet at 285 pounds, and then he can slide all the way up to that small ball five spot. Even at six foot seven, he plays closer to seven feet because of his explosiveness, averaged 2.4 block shots per 40 minutes, has tremendous instincts, and then he's a grab-and-go threat. He can operate kind of like a point forward in transition. You know, we've seen how valuable that is in today's NBA, pushing off the break, scoring and facilitating, and then he's an inside-out threat as well. This is a guy who can operate as the screener in pick-and-roll so he can catch lobs, or he can initiate offense as the ball handler in pick-and-roll, then he can punish a switch. He can score from all over the floor, and lastly, an extremely underrated passer. So he's the real deal. He can function as a small ball five or really as almost a point guard offensively. There's pretty much nothing he can't do aside from shooting the ball consistently.